So how to draw a golf ball with a driver, it's a subject that's of interest to people. I'm Adam Bazalgette, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. I'm here in Naples, Florida. Well, that was a reasonably straight one, but on the subject of draws, it's simple. That is to say, the club face has to be closed in relation to the swing. Everybody knows that. Now, let me just say, if you've spent years and years as a golfer, many have pretty much sliced the ball all the time. Not criticizing you, but you are not getting the most out of that fantastic brain that you've been given. This is a lot easier than you think. Now, we're assuming solid contact for a second. The first thing I want to focus on is the club face, because it really sets you up. If you can at least curve it to the left, you can always figure out as I'll show you. I think it's easy that way how to get the swing in the proper direction. And as we go through all these things, we'll cover quite a few things. I want to give you references feel-wise, but also visually. You should film yourself on your phone. You can check yourself out against these checkpoints, see if you're doing it right. Okay, a moment on the grip and then a checkpoint from this position. Number one, is it down in the fingers enough that you can cock your wrist? Is this pad on top of the club? Number two, when it's down there, is it wrapped over enough? At least V to back shoulder. Here's your test. Can you freely and easily tilt the face where it's that side of looking down at the ground. I can do that very easily. If you've got a grip that's way up here and stretched on the club and it's in a weak position, you're going to find that's much, much more difficult to do. John Rahm on the left, Tiger Woods on the right. So when you look from these two views, let's say Tiger Woods, by the time your club is a couple of feet beyond impact, it should be, the face of it should be pointed well, well to the left like that. That's the kind of a look you should get there. And as we look at Rahm from face on, by the time you're about tummy high, the glove should be visible below the forearm of the trail arm, there, below the right arm in his case. So next, the acid test. What's the ball doing? Again, we'll assume solid contact. Going to go mid-size swing here, not even, and I'm going to really work that face. I don't care where the ball starts. It has to curve this way. You've got to be able to do that. Don't just try for a tiny draw to start with. Let me hit this and we'll make a comment. So fairly small backswing. I snapped that thing right down into the bushes there. Wasn't pretty, but that's sort of what I was setting out to do. You can work from there. Remember, we're not talking about whipping the club head. We're talking about turning it and turn it soon enough you can get the ball to do that. Okay, next thing, we've got our club face down, or at least we have some talking points there. How about the swing direction, the swing path? Now, for a lot of golfers, the thought of swinging more to the right for the right-handed player, but at the same time turning the club to the left, a little bit like the old, what was it, rub the head, pat the tummy, a little bit confusing but ask yourself this if you had a little small volleyball in your hand could you push it to the right and spin it this way a little bit pretty confident you could let's look on the TV we'll look at some keys to good swing path so what should the downswing plane look like well let's take a line for instance from the golf ball to the top of Justin Thomas's club head he does this beautifully you'll notice he does not swing at the ball he doesn't swing down the yellow line the club comes down I mean it is well well below that line working down and once it's worked down once it's worked down at the side of the body you can see it's almost behind his leg we're going to get into that a bit more late in the video then it goes underneath his body and here's the key out to the target out there so club swings down to the side of the body and then out to the target that's what we're looking for well after 35 years of teaching golf I'm convinced that there are two primary reasons people so habitually swing across the target line first one is their inability to consistently square the club face they're just not able to get it square enough and I am telling you if you swing from the inside with an open face you'll play about three holes because you run out of golf balls it instinctively causes people to go this way to help them get the ball to start more to the left so squaring the face is number one number two people just aim at the golf ball they don't aim their swing out there now if you doubt the ability of people to swing slightly from the inside give someone an alignment rod and say hey can you toss this down the fairway I've yet to meet the person who couldn't reasonably first or second try get that to happen you'll see someone once in a while hold on to it too long and it tosses over their back shoulder people can do that pretty easily until the balls underneath them once they see that and start hitting at it the club tends to come out and over the top now we're going to tackle that but I want two more checkpoints for you to help you get in a good spot coming down next time you video yourself these relate to the backswing we'll have a quick look on TV then we'll tackle the path so Ricky Fowler on the left Jessica Corder on the right let's have a look at Ricky here if we put a target line there for him he really whines and what he creates is a lot of depth or space in there between his hands and the ball target line he does that by winding well we look at Jessica Corder here you can see really using the upper body well 
keeps good space between her hands and her shoulders there. You do those things well, you will have a far easier. Now just briefly, you may say, well, hey, Freddie Couples or a number of other players have a very upright backswing or whatnot. Well, they do, but I'm telling you, for the average golfer to get the arms close to them and up in the air, it is a much, much harder road, much more difficult to get back from the inside coming down. Now, as we look at swinging from the inside, we look at swing path, let's think about it in this instance more as what would create power. If I have to whack that bag there, the more the stick is bent close to me and the more it's behind me, the more power I have as I need it, the less effort I have to put out to create speed. What people tend to do, let me move that ball for just a second, there's so much thrust and the club's so far away from them, they feel like they're swinging hard, but really their uncorking power pretty much always leads to cutting across it. So I want you to get, if you don't have a bag, it's okay, get the golf club, make some small swings. I want you to picture skipping a rock. You bump your hips, you'd let your hand get here. That's what we're trying to do here. Get the club loaded, get it where it's close to us. And from there, I can really deliver some speed. Now, my experience of teaching for decades, I mentioned this earlier, but I've taught golf for a long time. When and if, let's say, people start to get a good feeling for that, maybe with the impact bag, one of the first things I always hear out of their mouth is, I don't feel like I'm turning and moving nearly as much. That's probably good. What they're doing, bumping the hips and storing power and popping it like that. That's the feeling you want to have. So let's try a little shot here. We'll try to marry two things together. Not trying for a full one, trying to get it right there like skipping the rock. And I'm going to see if I can square the club up. Pretty good deal there. I could really feel that club get nice and close. I could feel the energy in the club as it went through. If you like this video, by the way, I hope you'll share the link. Help your friends out. If it's messing you up, maybe you want to share the link. Mess them up too. Let's have a look from here to close. Okay, here we go in order. Make sure you have a grip that really allows you mobility to square the club up. Let's work towards some good coil, some space, and some depth in the backswing. So much easier to hit from the inside when you do that. Next checkpoints we want you to have from here. When you start down, you should see some lateral bump of your hips, not your head, your hips, and the club should appear to get closer to you, not farther away from you. And of course, once you've done that, once you've got the energy stored, stabilize, let the club snap and let the face cross over, you'll be drawing it. And I imagine you'll be doing it with a lot more power than you're accustomed to. Let's try one here. Not too bad. Hope this helps you.